In this video, we'll talk about how to actually create a project that will impress future employers and will show that you are the guy or the girl for the job. And without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Actually, I had a conversation with Elias, my friend, and the guy who works with me and helps me build the program. And he actually sent me something on WhatsApp. So he told me that there are three types of people, right? We have problem fixers, then we have problem solvers, and then we have problem finders. So a problem fixer throws untaught through actions at the problem until it's solved. They don't think about why it worked or what the problem actually was. They don't review their work with a view toward improving next time. The trajectory of growth is zero to zero, aka no growth. They are dying pretty much, okay? And then we have problem solvers. So a problem solver thinks through what the problem might be before they tackle it, right? They are intellectualizing the problem. They are like scientists. They theorize, they test and implement one thing at a time. Hence, they learn for more accuracy and efficiency next time. The trajectory of growth is one to one, okay? There is growth here. So they put some time in and they get something out. And then with time, their growth is gonna be linear. And then we have the problem finder. So a problem finder doesn't just receive problems and solve them, but they actively seek out, discover, and methodically solve problems others didn't know were there. They live on an escalated plane of awareness and bring exponential growth and efficiency to themselves and those around them. This is very important. So if you wanna build a project or a product, the way I recommend it on my channel, if you wanna make money, you need to have this approach starting today. Like I'm just being honest with you. The 99% of people, maybe 95% of people, they are problem fixers. They, they just wing things, right? That's why you see so many people in my portfolio reviews with lame applications like the weather app, the e-commerce website, Pokemon, Pokedex, whatever, right? They have all these lame projects that someone give to them and they don't, they don't even think about why they are making those things in the first place. And then they apply for one or two years, they get zero answers back, zero interviews, and they make zero money. And now they go all over the internet, on YouTube videos, in TikTok, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and they write comments like, oh, you're coping, right? Those are problem fixers. Those people will never get hired as developers. They will never make any money with anything, okay? And even if AI wouldn't be a thing, they would still not get hired. But now they have a proper massive excuse. Then we have problem solvers, where these types of people are actually really keen to learn how to solve specific things. They're actually excited about programming. They're actually excited about this field but they have one big problem. They require someone to give them a problem. And even though this is like a big problem, from my point of view, and I'll tell you why in a second, they are actually set up on a trajectory to survive and probably even thrive uh, in the next five to 10 years. Why? Because they will see a new trend, a new technology, and they will jump on it and they will learn it and then they will add it to their skill set and they will become more valuable. They'll actively try to understand why they need AWS. They'll actively try to learn how to use AI in their advantage and put it in their projects and whatnot. But then you have the next level, which is problem finder. And to be a problem finder, it means to be in the top 1% of people. So problem finder means actively experiencing life and actively working in different industries that are not coding, okay? And actively trying to find problems that you can solve. Problems that people don't even realize they have in the first place. They just say things like, I dislike that, or I hate this thing, and so on and so forth. But then you have like a sixth sense for that. And then whenever someone says, I hate something, you go in and you start researching. The way I've done it is, I realized that people, they have the same problems with learning how to code, as I had when I was learning. So nobody solved their problems. In fact, their problems were even more difficult for some reason. So then I created my coaching program and whatnot. Now, if you remember, I think two weeks ago, the NVIDIA CEO said something like, coding is gonna disappear in the next, you know, five, 10 years. It's gonna be unnecessary to teach this to our kids. And I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a second, and I'm gonna agree with him. So. What he also said or that made me make this video was the fact that 
he said that you need to become an expert in a specific industry. So for example, farming, right? So if you get good at farming, you realize that you need certain types of softwares to solve certain types of problems for farmers or for people who use certain machines or the people that are in the logistics department and so on and so forth. Now, coding really becomes a tool that you can pair to something else, right? I heard someone saying something like, coding became democratized. So if coding became democratized and anyone can learn it, the only thing that matters is how and to what you apply coding to. So I know this video is very direct and it might scare you and whatnot, and it's not gonna make you feel good right away with dopamine and shit like that. But this is what you need to hear if you actually wanna make some sort of cash in the next few years with this skill. Otherwise you'll be where you are flipping burgers at McDonald's. I hope you don't want that. I don't want you to do that. How can you actually become a problem finder? Well, if we use first principles, we need to find problems. Oh, you're such a genius, Christian. I know, thank you. We need to be able to find a specific industry that we can work in to find a specific problem. Because if I tell you, hey, find a problem, well, you'll spend probably the next six months finding nothing. So in order to find a problem, you cannot just go on the internet and ask people, hey, do you have a problem? Because people will not tell you, you have a, they have a problem. Like if I tell you, hey, do you have a problem with learning how to code? You'll say, no, everything is fine. But in fact, you've been stagnating for the six, nine months and you don't even realize that you have this problem. So in fact, what you have to do is you have to start taking action towards doing something that is not coding related, even though you are not interested in that specific thing uh, in the first place. Um, you want to sell rubber ducks how would you do that? Well, maybe you'd create an account on Shopify, then you'd try to find a rubber duck supplier on Alibaba, and then you would take that product and then you'd try to put it into Shopify, and then you'd try to write some ads, and then you'd try to run the ads on Facebook and see if you can make any sales. Now in this whole process, I mentioned a bunch of things, right? Like for example, you have to find a product on Alibaba has to have a good price, maybe the right amount of reviews, and so on and so forth. Can you make a product that would make finding rubber ducks easier? Okay, maybe cheaper rubber ducks. Maybe you can find uh, a way to figure out which rubber duck uh, ships faster. Maybe you can find out which rubber duck has the best testimonials. Okay, maybe you can find or create an algorithm with ChatGPT that could indicate which rubber duck has the biggest sale, has the biggest chance of making the most amount of sales because you can have two rubber ducks that seem almost identical, but one picture has um, a bigger contrast, right? You can A-B test different things. And then another problem is Shopify. Shopify charges, I don't know, 12 bucks a month. Can you make a service that is more streamlined than Shopify, right? Instead of uh, having all those features and whatnot, maybe you can just make a simple drag and drop website that is somehow hooked up to Alibaba and then you'd be able to insert products right away and they create web pages on the fly without having to press any buttons in Shopify. And then you charge $5 per month for that. Now, maybe you're not interested in e-commerce, but maybe you're interested in productivity or saving time, or uh, maybe you're interested in accounting, maybe you're interested in, I don't know, racing, betting, gambling, whatever interest you might have, you should try to operate in that um, industry to find a problem and then you can solve it later with code and I'm gonna tell you how to do it in a second. Right now your brain is tuned towards finding a problem because your brain has something called the reticular activation system. So when I wanted to buy a BMW M4, I think three, four years ago, maybe even five years ago, I was so in love with that car that I started seeing it every day, multiple times. Probably you experienced this. So when you start thinking about, okay, I wanna find a problem, your reticular activation system is gonna be fixated on helping you find the right problem. Now, you'll find probably 10 problems during this month as you are trying to sell rubber ducks on the internet. Now you have to decide, 
which problem you want to solve. And that is called idea validation. You don't start building just yet because that would be stupid. Again, you don't want to be a junior. You want to be a professional from day one. So what you'll do is you start making a game plan. Like I want my app to do this, 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 this. You'll pretty much list all the features that your app is going to have. Dark mode, sign up. If you skip that bullshit, then you'll start having the real meat and the potatoes. Being able to track how the user interacts with the website via a heat map. Maybe you want to Google this heat map and see what it does. Maybe adding a, an extra paid feature where you can show how many people bought this product in the last 24 hours. So then you can trigger some fear of missing out in the potential customers so they can buy that product faster. And then you can track the difference between you using the heat map and the FOMO plugin versus not. And then if you make more money with the FOMO plugin, then you can sell that and put it on a landing page, etc. Et You're gonna spend maybe two or three hours writing out 50 to 100 different features. Okay, the first 10 will come very easy and the rest will take some work, some thinking, okay? One thing that AI cannot replace you yet with is your ability to think. You have to think deeply. Once you've done this, the next process or the next step in this process is to actually have some sort of design. So in my coaching program, I have a designer that works full time for us. I'm actually following the same process that I'm outlining for you, okay? So when my guys want to build a feature, they just say, hey, I want a design for this. I want this thing to do this and this. Give me the design, they do it. Probably you cannot afford that because I spend around $1,000, $2,000 per month on this designer alone just to have these things done. So, because if you have a product that does a bunch of things, great, but the product looks like trash, you will not be taken in consideration, right? So you want to have a good looking product. If you, can have, if you cannot afford $10,000, $15,000 to spend on a designer, which I understand, then what you should do is to try to find a template. The one that I recommend all the time there is a website called lexingtonteams.com. I'm not affiliated with the guy at all, but I like it and I actually purchased his team. The team I use for my website, if you click on the first link in the description, um, the team I use from him is called Navy. So I bought his team and I used it. So I'm not a designer, you are not a designer, you shouldn't worry about learning design because it's gonna take you two, maybe three years to learn that well, but that doesn't mean you should ignore design because it's very important. A product has to solve a problem and it also needs to look good. If your product actually solves a real problem and then it looks good, then you can start building it. Ideally, you'll start building this product, this project with someone else. In my coaching program, we have, I think, eight people that are working on this project at the same time. And in this way, they actually learn how to be part of a team because if you look at any job description you will see that they want you to be able to work in an agile environment you have to know how to use git um, team project um, team management systems like jira and confluence and whatnot so we are using all those things so then when they have interviews they actually talk the talk and walk the walk and then the people can tell that oh these guys have experience and that's why i'm recommending you to actually do this process as well because it's gonna help you massively. Whenever you feel like, oh, this is not gonna get anywhere, stop your stupid brain and then keep doing the work because you don't know what's gonna happen after. Like you don't go to the gym for like one or two days and you don't see like huge biceps and triceps and you say, oh, the gym doesn't work. No, you go to the gym forever. And then after a year or so, you start to see some results. And with coding, it's exactly the same. You have a few months where you have to learn, then you have other months where you have to build. People stop after their learning phase and they start applying to jobs and they get nowhere and they don't understand this. It's unbelievable. That's how it works. You are either a problem fixer and you'll be thrown to the bin or you're a problem solver or you're a problem finder. If you don't wanna be a problem finder because this is another skill that some people don't have, okay? If you don't wanna be a problem solver and if you want a problem given to you and you just wanna follow instructions and you actually 
want to just solve problems that are given to you, you should apply to my mentorship program. That's the first thing in the description. I already found a problem. I already solved most of your problems. You just have to do the work. I don't think we have spaces this month. You might want to check it out in, um, by clicking on the link in the description. And some of the guys have so many interviews they cannot handle. So because they have that problem, I had to hire uh, two guys that are teaching algorithms and system design because they are getting high level interviews like mid level and senior level, even though they have zero experience as coders besides what they did in the program. You don't hear about this stuff in other coding boot camps and whatnot. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to use AI to your advantage so you can actually be a total G, a savage. Okay, that's what you learn. Uh, because if you use AI in the wrong way, you will be fucked. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.